Amazon Prime Day deals 2019, and more coming up on today's episode of The Latest in Tech News. Hey, Gadget here. You're just in time for the latest episode of the world's only 3-in-1 show on tech, gadgets, and gaming news. That's right, this is The Latest in Tech News. My name is Taylor Merrick, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button right now so that you don't miss the next episode. We do this Monday to Friday, uh, for, well foreseeable future and uh speaking of well foreseeable future isn't it great to be monday i mean it's monday back from the weekend going into the work week oh, oh what's that you hate mondays well <laughs> what's there to hate about it it's amazon prime day don't you know you can get all the deals goodies and more we'll be getting to that Shortly, I guarantee you it's going to be a segment that you like, so be sure and hold off on the like button if you're watching a video today till we get to that part, because I bet you'll find something that you like in there. Also, if you didn't like that and you want to like something else, uh, we'll be taking a look at a, well, some sad news, a computer password inventor dies aged 93. We'll also be taking a look at the Twitter desktop redesign and my thoughts on it. Also, we'll be taking a look at Waves announcing an exclusive new toll calculation feature. Finally, an app that listens to the directions and, 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 and can figure out the toll roads. Because I'm getting sick and tired of trying to figure out toll roads. Also, we'll be taking a look at a super customizable controller for the Nintendo Switch. And finally, we'll be taking a look at a single player division spinoff. Might possibly be a thing someday. To which I say... Yes, bring it on, but before we can get to that, did you know that Hewlett Packard's company name was almost Packard Hewlett? Yep, well, Bill Hewlett and David Packard graduated from university in 1935 in typical fashion for the industry that would become much more commonplace in the years to come. You'd hear, um, well, I started my business in a garage. Those two did. The company was properly formed in 1939, though the pair could not decide on a name and ended up, get this, flipping a coin to determine whose name would come first. Thus, HP was born, although it could have easily have been PH instead. Good thing that 50-50 didn't work out the other way, otherwise we would have been confused. What are we talking about, PH? We're talking about the water? Water molecules in a pool or something? I don't know. Speaking of what's to know and not know, well, today in tech history, we'll be taking a look back on, well, things that happened on this day in history, being that today is July 15th, 2019. On this day in 1983, Nintendo releases their Famicom system, short for Family Computer, in Japan. The Famicom would be slightly modified with a copy protection system, a redesigned chassis, a front-loading cartridge mechanism, and released in North America just over two years later, later as the Nintendo Entertainment System, known as the NES. The Famicom NES system would become one of the most influential game systems ever produced, making Nintendo the premier company in the video game industry during the late 80s and early 90s, picking up the mantle where Atari left off. Also, on this day in history, in 1928, Enigma uh, encoded the first message. And for those of you who don't know, uh, an incredible piece of history. I, as a matter of fact, when I was in my younger years, devoured books and documentaries and videos and anything I could get my hands on at my local library, wanting to learn more about the Enigma machine. I loved making codes. I still do to this day, although not so much, but the Enigma machine encodes its first message. A simple German machine the size of a portable typewriter, Enigma allowed for security and communications by a process in which typed letters were replaced by a cipher text displayed on illuminated lamps. The cipher was symmetrical, so entering the cipher text into another Enigma reproduced the original message. Security was provided by a set of rotor wheels and a series of patch cables whose arrangement was agreed upon previously. They had an arrangement that went on. Enigma was used extensively by the German military, in case you didn't know, during World War II to transmit battle plans and other secret information. By December of 1941, however, British codebreakers managed to decipher the code, allowing them to routinely read most Enigma traffic. And in case you are curious, an Enigma machine is on display at the Computer History 
museum. Bet you didn't know that. Yeah. I actually, I, I, I delved so much into the Enigma machine. It is such a fascinating machine. It's, it's so, it's simplicity. It's so simple and yet so complex. Like, no wonder why they <laughs> tried to sit there and reverse engineer it. It was, it, it was quite a, quite a fascinating um, feat of work and it definitely bode well for the <laughs> security of that time. Although, as with other things with security, you got to keep up on it, and you always have to be changing algorithms because people will reverse engineer it, they will hack it, they will figure it out. So you always have to be on your toes in the security industry. With that out of the way, let's head on over to today's feature story. Speaking of feature stories, this is one feature story I could do without today. It's Amazon Prime Day, um, at least here in the States, July 15th and the 16th. I'm not going to be doing more articles on this tomorrow, but apparently Twitch has something going on for their Amazon Prime Day deals. They're selling out, um, and and if you're on Twitch, you know exactly what I'm talking about there. We're not talking about that one today. We're actually going to be taking a look at the 10 best deals of Prime Day 2019. If you want the nice, simple, to the point, if you're wondering, hey, there's probably a whole bunch of sales going on. This is essentially Black Friday sales going on in the middle of July instead of the day after Thanksgiving here in the United States. So what what kind of deals are we looking at here? Um, well, day one is kicking off, and, uh, well, a lot of people, including people over at BGR.com, the article that we're taking a look at today, spent every waking minute of today digging through all kinds of killer deals available for Amazon's biggest sales event of the year. So let's take a look. Shall we? Well, first off, we have the Fire TV Stick. It's, uh, well, their best-selling Fire TV Stick, now with Alexa Voice Remote, the second gen. And it, uh, let's see, you can watch favorites from Netflix, YouTube, Prime, Star, Showtime, CBS All Access, plus stream for free with Pluto, IMDb TV, and others. And what we're, what is, what's the look at? Oh, Fire Stick TV at just $15.00. Next up, we're looking at the Sony wireless noise-canceling headphones starting at just $99, a PlayStation Plus 12-month subscription for $40 instead of $60, four of the best Instant Pot deals we've ever seen. By Instant Pot, it's the, not the drug, it's a rice cooker. I, I, I know I had to cover that because you guys are going to be like, oh, you said pot! Okay, <laughs> well, you know, Confucius say, man who is high stands on pot. Anyways, a slew of discounted Nintendo Switch games and even a killer deal on a Switch console. Brand new Apple Watches starting at $169, iPad starting at $249, insanely good HD TV and 4K TV deals starting at just $99, Philips Hughes deals like we've never seen before, Ring Video Doorbell deals starting at just $70, some of the greatest Roomba deals of all time, and incredible prices on SanDisk micro SD cards from 64 gigs all the way to one terabyte. And in case you're wondering, hey, do you have, you know, links to all this stuff in the show notes today? Yeah, head on over to technewsgadget.net and you can find the uh, articles that we've covered all the stuff in and you can click on over and tap away to your heart's content. So, but you probably have to clamp down on this deal quick if you want it if it's not sold out already so uh as for the sony wireless noise canceling headphones it's the sony wh ch 700 n wireless bluetooth noise canceling over the ear headphones so i guess they're comfortable you can customize your sound and it does have a usb charging cable and audio cable for a wired connection yep for 99 bucks also, PlayStation Plus 12-month membership digital codes. So you're good for 12 months for 40 bucks. Did you know that with the PlayStation membership, you get free games every month? So you want that. As for the Instant Pots, <laughs> well, you can create quality dishes, consistent cooking, uh, a whole bunch of digital display, touch screen, digital controls, stainless steel, rubber coating, active pump system, 12 volt DC motor, and it can be used in or out of the Instant Pot with or without an Instant Pot. They have a, an immersion circulator. 
They also have the cooker here for 55 bucks. In case you're wondering, are you looking at something on the screen right now? Right, yeah, we're watching a video. And uh, you can actually tune in as well if you're listening to this via podcast anytime. YouTube.com forward slash tech news gadget. Oh, this one looks similar. The Instant Pot 6-Quart 7-in-1 Multi-Use Programmable Pressure Cooker for $59. If you want to step it up a notch, you can get the Wi-Fi 6-Quart in a charcoal color for $89. They also have a blender, apparently, that you can get for $90. As for the Nintendo Switch deals, you can get a Nintendo Switch and a gray Joy-Con plus a $35 Nintendo eShop gift card for $300. Bucks. If you're looking to get Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, you can do that for $30. Bucks. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is on sale for $49.94, roughly $50. Mario Kart 8 for $50. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Why is that game still at $50? Oh, right. It's Nintendo Switch. Uh, and also you can get the new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe for $50. Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy for $24. Mario and the Rabbids Kingdom Battle for $25. Oh, look. You can get Minecraft for Nintendo Switch for $28. Oh, for crying out loud. Uh, if you like dancing, you can get Just Dance 2019 for 20 bucks. You can get Lego Disney Pixar's The Incredibles for 20 bucks. Carnival Games for 15. Super Mario Party for 50. Sid Meier's Civilization 6 for 30 dollars, and a bunch of other games. As for Apple deals, you can get the Apple Watch Series 3 for 169 dollars, or you can upgrade it a little bit more and get it for 200. Apple Watch Series 4 starting at $350. It's a good deal there. You can get the Apple iPad, the Wi Fi 32 gig version for $250. If you want to go up to the $128, that's $300. You can get the Apple iPad Pro, the 10.5 inch Wi Fi plus cellular 256 gig model for $630. You can get the Apple iPad Pro. That has the 512 gigabyte storage for $700. As for TV deals, oh look, they got a whole bunch of TV deals on here. Insignia 32 inch 720p HD smart LED for 100 bucks, and another one for 190 bucks. Uh, just looking here, there's some nice looking TVs. As for the Philips Hue light bulbs, you can get them for up to 50% off. A bunch of different colors. You can activate it. The Philips Hue are actually pretty pretty interesting. Um, Beyonce Light Strip for like $67. A kit for $102. Let's see. You get four bulbs and one Hubworks with Alexa Apple plug-in or um, Google Assistant. So you can pair it with your existing Nest or Samsung SmartThings system. As for Roomba, you can get the Roomba. If you wanted for 230, um, another one for 300 dollars, another one for 550, and for the SanDisk micro SD cards, looks like you can get 64 gig SD card for 13 bucks, 128 gigs for 20 bucks. Um, what is? Why do they have an extreme micro one? I guess if you need the extreme for 20 bucks, and then a 400 gig one for 45 dollars. A 512 gig one for a hundred dollars, and a one terabyte extreme micro SDXC SanDisk memory card for three hundred and forty dollars. So there's some deals that we have there. I know that there's some other ones. All right, most of you who are listening right now, this is part of where you want to tune in. Love computers, right? Well, have we got something for you? Well, we got some PC deals. So if you guys are thinking about getting a computer or have the cash right now that you want to burn on one, now would probably be a good time. Just be sure you check on the reviews. I know I have my personal preferences and my favorites. So be sure to do your research a little bit. And if it looks good and it sounds good, snap on it. Otherwise, they'll sell out pretty quickly. They usually do. But uh, yeah, let's see. <laughs> Just keep in mind, the only issue is that Prime Day, at least for Amazon, is only available for Prime members. And if you haven't signed up for Amazon Prime, you can't take advantage of these special deals. 
Uh, but don't worry, it's not really an issue. You can get a 30-day free trial if you want, or you can, well, get it for a discount. So let's take a look. Gaming monitors. The BenQ 24-inch IPS monitor, pretty basic one, uh, a cheap 1080p gaming monitor or a second screen you can get for 29% off retail price. If you want to up it to a 27-inch, you can get that one for 30% off. Or you can get the Samsung 27-inch uh, curved monitor for 33% off. Of course, I had to go to the website that's only posting it in pounds. So the deals, I guess, are not just in the U.S., so they're all over the place. You can get the HP Omen monitor, interesting, that has AMD FreeSync with 144 hertz gaming with just a one millisecond response time, 25 inch for 22% off retail price. You can get the Samsung 32 inch for 28% off. The Philips size, if you want the 4K UHD 40 inch monitor for 36% off. As for solid state drives, if you guys are interested in that, you can get the SanDisk SSD Plus 240 gigs for 45% off the listing price. That's pretty impressive. Or you can get the Samsung 970 Evo 1 terabyte. This is one of the better ones. The Samsung solid state drive you can get for 31% off as well. Great price for a speedy solid state storage device. Gaming keyboards. I know how critical those are for some of you. It's definitely for me. HyperX Alloy has a discount going on right now. A 31% discount on that keyboard. Uh, the Corsair K70. It's classic. It's not cheap, but it is 30% off. If you're looking for mice, Corsair Harpoon Wireless. It's a pretty good wireless gaming mouse for 35% off. You could get the Razer Mamba Elite. For 25% off. Yep, we're talking about the Razer here. And the Razer Mamba Wireless for 20% off. And in case you're worried about the Razer Mamba Wireless version, you're like, well, it's it's wireless, so it's not as impressive as a wired one. Well, it's actually pretty impressive. And it has a great 50-hour battery life, too. So you could literally leave it on for several days solid before it runs out of battery. Like, you, well, unless you manage to do a 50-hour stream, congrats. Um, but, yeah, that's the deals that they have going on. Uh, if we happen to miss any Amazon Prime deals, post below down in the comment section. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, if these deals work out for you, great. Uh, links are in the show notes, so be sure to head on over for that or type in whatever you might be looking for on Amazon Prime. See if you have the Prime deal going on, discount sales specials. This is only going on today and tomorrow. So my thoughts are Amazon Prime. Yippee, woohoo. I'm kind of like <laughs> half and half on it. I mean, okay. Uh, for those of you wondering, I deliver a lot of parcels for a living. It's my full-time job. It's not the only thing that I do, but it is a big component of what I do. And when these prime deals or specials or sales go on we're like whoopee we're gonna be flooded with a lot of boxes and we still have to take them out and deliver everything on time uh within the scheduled time block that we have to do it which makes things really interesting you never figure out how to bring in more people to just help offload the demand uh, of the parcels that need to be delivered but neither here nor there but i look at this and i go uh and this is the exact reason why I don't want to participate in these. Because I know somebody somewhere delivering the parcel to me is going to say, Why can't this person go to a dang store? Valid point! Valid point, sir! I would love to have you just walk over to GameStop and Best Buy or, or, or whatever sells electronics on a sale. Buy it. Put it in your vehicle and take it home. Because I'd rather not deliver it for you. Because then more headaches go along with that. But... Be that as it may, some people love it, some people hate it. I'm kind of it. Eh, that's there's my opinion on it. It's fifty fifty. Sorry, I wish I was more optimistic. I'm re I'm really not. Uh, I'm like mediocrely optimistic. If there's a deal that I like, I'll probably get it. Is there money that I want to spend right now? No, not really. So and no 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 deals for me. I guess this time around. Uh, next time, uh, we'll see. 
with that out of the way, <laughs> let's head on over to our next story. All right, so some sad news. Uh, computer pioneer Fernando Corbato, who first used passwords to protect user accounts, has died at the age of 93. So I, I guarantee you this is going down in the history books. Dr. Corbato introduced the basic security measure while developing methods that let more people use a computer at the same time. He developed a technique called time sharing that divided up the processing power of a computer so it could serve more than one person at a time. Um, I guess he died as a result of complication by diabetes. Uh, the work on sharing a computer was done at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, known as MIT, where Dr. Corbato spent his entire career. He joined MIT in 1950 to study for a doctorate in physics, but realized during those years that he was more interested in the machines that physicists used to do their calculations than in the actual subject himself. Uh, so, using computers during the 50s was an exercise in frustration because the huge monolithic machines, weighed tons by the way, could only handle one processing job at a time. So, in a bid to overcome this limitation, Dr. Corbato developed an operating system for computers called the Compatible Time Sharing System, CTSS. Rather than have the machine dedicated to one person, they, uh, the program divided up the processing power of a computer into small slices so it could do little bits of work for a whole bunch of other people. But keep in mind, even in the 50s and 60s, computers were so fast that no user noticed they were only getting a small portion of a machine's processing power at any one time. So the development of this program led to another time-sharing program called Multix, which was a forerunner of, get this, the Linux operating system and many other aspects of contemporary computing. Passwords were introduced to CTSS as a way for users to hide away the files and programs they were working on from other users on the same machine. So it seemed like a... Very straightforward solution, he told Wired in 2012. In 1990, Dr. Corbato received the A.M. Turing Award, which is one of the highest honors given to computer scientists for his pioneering work on time-sharing systems. Professor Fadel Adib from the Media Lab at MIT paid tribute, saying, Our world would be very different without his research and that of his descendants. He inspires in his work and his legacy. So, next time you type in a password, thank Dr. Corbato for coming up with the idea behind all of it. Okay, so we got some more news going on. I guess Twitter just decided to drop their desktop redesign feature. I know they had been going around for a while saying, hey, look, they had a little button off on the side saying, want to try out our new version? And I'm like, oh, great, here we go, not again. It, it's Every single time Twitter does this, I go, mm, why'd you got to do that? And I, <laughs> I honestly don't know why. Um, so Twitter is rolling out a new desktop design today. Uh, as, as you can see here on the screen, it looks, um, I guess, more simple. Um, but it is adding more customization options and a completely rearranged navigation experience. The redesign has been open to testers for the past few months, but it will be available to everyone rolling out over the next few days. Unlike previous redesigns, however, opting into the new experience will be mandatory and there will be no legacy Twitter to fall back to, according to Mashable. Now, the biggest, most noticeable change is that the top navigation bar has been moved to the left sidebar, which contains bookmarks, lists, your profile, and a new Explore tab. Twitter says the Explore tab has been brought over from its mobile app to feature more live videos and personalized local trends, so some good stuff there. Direct messages have also been revamped to show conversations and sent messages in the same window. Great. The desktop experience is getting different themes and color schemes as well if you're interested, including two more options for dark mode. It's One is dark and the next one is a dim mode. Twitter's borrowed a few more features from its mobile apps to improve the desktop experience, like the sparkle button on the home bar that lets you switch between seeing the latest chronologically ordered tweets instead of the top tweets. Oh, just like in Facebook. The side navigation bar will also make it easier for users with multiple accounts to switch profiles quickly without having to log out and log in. Again, a feature that's been available on the mobile app for years, and quite honestly, one that I love using. It, it's so simple on an iOS app for me. If I have Twitter open, I have like... A handful of accounts so I like switching between all of them so this is great so I'm happy about that feature so uh, they also they also tweeted out this video <laughs> 
there you go so it's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve but i don't think it's gonna be that difficult it's just me trying to wrap my head around oh great they changed the design again but i think this is gonna be a little bit easier for me to handle compared to tweet deck uh is which is what i used a handful of years ago or so when twitter was still young to actually figure out what what i was doing on twitter it helped organize stuff and then tweet deck went hey look at we're gonna try this and we're gonna try that and then we're gonna switch it all up and then i think twitter wound up buying them out or something along those lines and then tweet decks just kind of been floating around in the void ever since then but yeah um i think i'll be fine i'll take a little bit getting used to but i think it'll be okay what do you guys think? Are you looking forward to this redesign? Is, has it rolled out for you yet? Do you like it? Let me know down in the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. Some good news. Waze's new toll calculator could make it easier to plan your next road trip. Now, for those of you who live in the United States, you know we have toll roads. And they're a pain in the butt, especially when you're trying to plan a trip from point A to point B, and then you forget that there were like two other toll roads that you're going to go on to that you had to pay for but you only budgeted for one so rather than figure out beforehand how much you needed to divvy up you just fling quarters at it and drive as fast as you can through it and snap the guardrail in half no i'm kidding don't do that um it's so stupid sometimes uh but right now it's peak road trip season and while that means there's a lot of things to consider when planning your next vacation like price of gas lodging and food Waze has a new feature that could help make budgeting for your next adventure slightly less of a headache that's because starting today Waze is rolling out a new toll calculation feature for the u.s and canada that can tell you how many tolls you're going to hit along the way and more importantly how much those tolls will cost both Waze, which is owned by Google, and Google Maps have long had the ability to tell if a certain route included time spent on toll roads, but neither were able to estimate the price of those tolls. Well, finally we have something, because we knew it were toll roads, obviously. By surfacing the price of tolls and putting an exact figure on a specific itinerary, Waze should make it easier to see if it's worth your time and money to stick to main highways, uh, like the I-80 and the Pennsylvania Turnpike, or if you should take a more scenic route to avoid the tolls. To gather all the info for its toll calculator, Waze says it sent out teams of map editors to nearly every corner of the country, which contains more than 5,000 miles of toll roads throughout the continental U.S. I think here's the funny thing. Once they hopped across the border into Wisconsin, they probably drove all over Wisconsin before they realized there ain't no toll roads in Wisconsin. Finally, a state that did it right. Right. Well, because I live in Wisconsin, so it's kind of hilarious that they probably drove to every single corner and were like, yeah, you guys know there's no toll roads up here, right? Go back down to Illinois. Um, <laughs> anyways, and if you're from Illinois, I, I, I apologize. It must really suck driving around on toll roads all the time. Apparently, you guys are helping your roads stay nice and in order um, to whatever degree that might be. And that's a long running joke. I know in Illinois for the longest time, it's like, you guys ever stop construction? Thought you fixed the roads. What are you doing? So at the moment, it seems as though this feature is exclusive to Waze, but they have reached out to confirm whether it will be showing up in Google Maps. Uh, they did not hear a comment back, but if you have any plans for a trip coming up soon, you might want to check to see if the new Waze update has hit your phone. And if it hasn't, it should be arriving soon. All right, Nintendo Switch fans, we ran across a super customizable controller. Might be a secret weapon for you guys if you're interested. Oh, look at all this stuff you can do on it. Look at this. Now, there are casual gamers who like to occasionally pick up a game to relax for a few minutes, and there are more dedicated players who will devote hours to completing games and unlocking every single achievement. And then there's gamers who refer to themselves as pros or hardcore who must have the highest score beat a game in the fastest time and dominate everyone else online. 8-Bit Do's new SN30 Pro Plus controller, which can be thoroughly customized and reprogrammed through a new app, is designed for that latter crowd. So, over the past few years, they have cemented themselves as one of the better third-party control makers with designs inspired by the gamepads included with classic consoles, but upgraded with extra features, wireless Bluetooth functionality, and improved hardware. Now, if you still got an original NES or SNES console plugged into your TV, well, 
8-bit dudes even got a plug-and-play wireless controller adapter so you can enjoy retro titles without the hassle of cords. So, if you're wondering, the company's controller lineup has primarily focused on retro gaming so far, but when the Switch arrived, it started adding more modern features to its controllers like extra shoulder buttons and analog joysticks. So, this new one features a design reminiscent of Nintendo's own Switch Pro controller. Not really a bad thing, but with the analog sticks arranged side-by-side -side like Sony does, with the PlayStation's gamepad. So if you guys really never figured out how to adapt to the whole Nintendo Switch thing, well, you can do it PlayStation style uh, with this controller. Now, it was revealed back in 2018 around E3 as a prototype with features like rumbling haptic feedback, wireless Bluetooth support, built-in motion controls, better ergonomics, and USB-C charging. It was expected to arrive sometime in late 2018, but they had to delay it do some fine-tuning, and explain it on Twitter earlier this year, and it turned out that the fine-tuning software uh, included, well, was the software for it, which allows the controller to be excruciatingly customized and reprogrammed. Available for Windows and Mac OS at launch, a mobile version might eventually arrive. The software not only allows all of the controller's buttons to be remapped to a gamer's preference, but it also allows multiple inputs to be programmed to a single button. So yes, inputting the Konami code just got significantly easier. So if you are interested, it is available for pre-order right now for 50 bucks, and it will ship on August 7th. So yeah, exciting, exciting stuff. I mean, look at it. If you like to play in the Nintendo Switch, it just looks just like you're playing the PlayStation Super simple buttons, you can sync it to the controller, sticks, triggers, vibration, macros, anything you want, you name it. Oh, man, this is the stuff of legend. All right, moving on to our final article today. We'll be looking at a gaming piece. Well, rather, a single-player Division spinoff might be a thing someday. Now, I don't know how many of you are Division fans. I am, and uh, I haven't played the second... Uh, division game and you're probably yelling at me right now saying why didn't you play the second division I haven't had time okay <laughs> I've been busy doing this show and working a full-time job and taking care of a family sometimes you know I got priorities uh, I'll, I'll get to it eventually I know that for for sure so um yeah for those of you who don't know Tom Clancy's the division series has a story of course American society has collapsed Following the release of the green virus and a secret unit of specially deputized agents is activated to restore order to what's left. But the story has generally taken a backseat to the persistent looter-shooter mechanics of jumping in, completing bounties, collecting new gear, shooting bullets at enemies who seem to have this immense health bar that you just have to, like, pump so much full of lead you actually wonder if there's actually anything left or if they're just this big blob of jelly. Um... So what about the single-player narrative focus game set in a Division universe? Well, that's not entirely out of the question. Tim Spencer, a level director at TT Games, a nicked a popular LEGO film tie-in games for WB Games, put forward the idea on Twitter this weekend. I love the idea of a single-player narrative-driven spin-off of The Division, he said, focusing on an agent trying to get back home to their family after being sent to NYC during the SHD blackout from the fall of DC which was The Last of Us X Division. In his tweet, Spencer tagged uh, Julian Garrity, the Division's creative director. He retweeted the idea to his followers, asking simply, Thoughts? The response from fans has been positive, to put it mildly. Now, part of the enthusiasm we're suspecting here is because both The Division and Division 2 are jam-packed with little proto-stories. Each Echo and mobile phone you find hints at an interaction that takes place within a larger narrative, but also at specific nested narrative threads that make up the larger world. And apart from digging through brief text descriptions in the collectibles tab, these threads are generally left unresolved. So you're like, there's this great world right behind this game, but what is it? They hint at the existence, but that's as far as they go. All that to say is that the Division's setting seems evocative and rich enough to provide the basis for a solid single-player narrative game. Perhaps maybe along the lines of The Last of Us or one of the Metro games? Apparently not something people are violently against, Garrity quipped, remarking on the enthusiastic receptions fans showed toward the idea. Now, 
Obviously, the fact that Gertie wanted to get a sense of how fans felt about the notion doesn't mean it'll ever come to pass, just keep in mind. Uh, even if it does happen someday, it certainly won't be happening soon. In the meantime, I guess we have DC Outskirts Expeditions to look forward to later this month. And if that's something that you want to be informed of, well, let me know and I'll be sure to cover it on the next show. And with that out of the way, that wraps up this episode of the Lace and Tech News. Thanks for tuning in, guys. New episodes every weekday. And uh, by the way, be sure to head on over to podcastawards.com. And currently this month is nomination. So if you find this podcast interesting, yes, it is available as a podcast. Even if you are listening, watching on YouTube, it's available on Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, Overcast, everywhere else you can listen to podcasts. So if you enjoyed this podcast, and I know one of you did, you left a review. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it a lot. Head on over to podcastawards.com, register for free, and then log in, and it will give you a selection of categories that you can pick your favorite shows that you want to nominate for an award. They have business category. They have politic category they have technology category they have a bunch of different categories they also have the people choice category which comprises all the shows so all you'd have to do is simply go to the technology category and nominate latest in tech news for an award save your nominations voting will be coming out i believe in august so your nominations really do matter, so if you have just a couple minutes of your time, head on over to Podcast Awards and nominate your favorite shows right now. So, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know by clicking that like button and by leaving a comment. Also, double check that you are subscribed so that you don't miss the next episode. I'm your host, Taylor Merrick, and remember, for the latest in tech, gadget, and gaming news, visit technewsgadget.net. Pretty much keeping awesome, guys, and I'll see you on the flip side.